Hi, today we'll be talking about Apache Iceberg and the Big Lake Metastore, and particularly the security that needs to be configured so everything works smoothly. So Big Lake has a Metastore, and this Metastore is a custom Apache uh, Iceberg catalog. And what it allows, it allows your Big Lake tables within BigQuery to stay in sync with your Iceberg tables. So if you're updating tables with Spark, your Iceberg tables with Spark, it's changing the metadata as inserts, updates, and deletes are occurring. And we want to make sure that BigQuery uh, stays in sync with those changes. So the Big Lake Metasaur allows this to happen. So we're going to go through the um, setup of the connection, storage accounts, data sets, and set the IAM security. So here are the assets we want to uh, set security on. We have a big Spark connection. So this is the connection that's going to run our data proc serverless cluster. And you can also uh, use Dataproc directly. You would add the same permissions that are added in this video to your uh, Dataproc service account. In addition, the Dataproc service account needs like a Dataproc worker role. So um, you need to set those Dataproc permissions as well. The Big Lake connection, this is the service account that will be used for creating the Big Lake tables in your data set. And the Big Spark connection will actually need to call the Big Lake connection. So we'll set up delegate access between the two connections. We have our taxi data set. This is where our tables will reside. So our Big Lake tables will be created in here. So we can query our iceberg tables directly in BigQuery. We have our actual store procedure. We have a storage account for our catalog and we have a storage account for source data. So here's the flow of the security. We're going to execute a store procedure that runs as you. Then we're going to uh, data proc uh, serverless will run as the big spark connection service account. It will uh, create a iceberg catalog and warehouse. Again, this is the big spark connection. This connection will then uh, call to the big lake connection when, uh, and this will create our iceberg tables within BigQuery. And then we can read our source data with big spark and we'll insert data using big spark. So let's jump into the details. So the first thing we need is a custom uh, role and we'll go through and set this up. So I'm going to uh, click on IAM. So let's jump into IAM and go to roles. And I've already created this role. It's pretty easy to uh, go ahead and, and create. You just hit create new role, but here's the role. And if I click edit role, you'll see we've granted it a single permission once it pops up and it will have BigQuery connections delegate. So that's already been set up. The next thing we want to make sure is uh, we need to have a data set. Let's go ahead and create our data set. So I'm going to click here. Uh, I already created the data set, so it should be empty. So I created an empty data set, but you can create it. Just make sure when you create it, it's in uh, region US. And then we have buckets. So I've created the buckets and no security has been set. So uh, let's take a look at the buckets here. So we have a catalog bucket that is completely empty. And then we have our source data and uh, you'll see there's a parquet file in here that we can read. Uh, so our buckets are created. And then we have two connections. Let's go ahead and create these connections. The first one will be your big spark connection. So let's click add. And you do need to be allow listed currently for a big spark, but in the future, you won't need to be allow listed. So let's just paste this as the uh, friendly and description. We're not going to connect the Metastore right now, so we're just going to create a big spark connection. And then we're going to create a big lake connection. And this will be a big lake connection. We'll paste this, paste, paste, create connection. Okay, so we should have everything set up. We have our, our role, we have our data set, we have our two buckets, we have a little source data, and we have our two connections. So the first thing I like to do is click on my connection and I'm going to copy the service account name. So this is our big lake connection and I'm going to put that here and then I'm going to click on the big spark connection. I'm going to copy the service account name and then I'm going to paste that here for reference. So let's close these down and let's go back and see what permissions we need to set. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, the big spark connection. So this means we're going to come here and pick our big spark connection service account and we need to grant permissions. So on our iceberg catalog storage account, we need to grant storage object admin. 
So let's go to our buckets and we're going to iceberg catalog. We'll click permissions and we will click current access and we will paste that in there. And then we need to grant storage object admin. So we'll go ahead and grant that. And it should pop up storage object admin and we'll hit save. So that should be our first one. Our second one is on source data. We need to grant storage object viewer. So this is where Spark's going to read our Parquet file. So let's go back here and we're going to click on source and we'll click on permissions and we'll click grant and we'll paste that in there. And we have storage object viewer, hit save. So that's been updated. So on the big lake connection, press sharing, and we're gonna add the custom delegate role. So let's come to BigQuery, and we're gonna to go to the big lake connection, click share, and we'll click add principle, paste it. And we wanna do a custom role, and we do a custom delegate, hit save. Next is on the taxi data set, BigQuery data owner. So let's come here, uh, policy updated, close. So on the taxi data set, sharing, and we wanna add principal. I think that was BigQuery uh, data owner. Let me just verify that. BigQuery data owner, so we'll hit save. Close, and then we need to set some IAM permissions. We're gonna add a Big Lake admin and BigQuery user. So the Big Lake admin lets us interact with the Big Lake Metastore, and the user lets us run BigQuery jobs. So I'm gonna to go to this window, go to IAM. And we'll grant access to this account. Paste it in there. So we have Big Lake admin, and another one, and Big Query user, and we'll hit save. Okay, so let's check this. Uh, we have our, uh, we did our storage object admin, our viewer, we did our custom delegate, we've set our data set permissions so we can. Uh, go ahead and drop tables that trigger some updates and, and drops. So this has all been set up. So the next one is our big lake connection. So let me go copy our big lake connection. I'm gonna close this down and I'll go to our big lake connection, copy that service account. So I have it. And the first thing I wanna do is add IAM to that service account. So I have the IAM open. I'm gonna hit grant access. And we want Big Lake Admin. Make sure that was right. So we're adding Big Lake Admin to that. We'll hit save. Okay. And then on the uh, storage account, so the catalog storage account, we want an object admin. Go to storage accounts and the catalog permissions. Grant access. And we want the storage object admin, which is here. Popped up. And then on the taxi data set, BigQuery data owner. So go to BigQuery, taxi data set, sharing permissions, add paste, and maybe a BigQuery data owner. Okay. So that has been set up and that's the end of the setup. So let's look at our store procedure. Let's close this. So we have a store procedure that is deployed. It's deployed um, right now. Uh, Terraform isn't deploying uh, the big spark store procedures yet. So you'll see some notes in here. And also uh, you need to replace these double spaces. Otherwise you get a Python uh, error saying it's improperly indented. So go ahead and do that. So let's look at this uh, store procedure. We have our connection, which is our big spark connection. 
we have our project, which is the project we currently have selected. We have our iceberg catalog. So this name has to be changed in all these places. And we're calling our iceberg catalog, iceberg catalog. We have our region. This is our storage account where we'll see our warehouse created. So this is the iceberg catalog storage account. And most importantly, we have this jar file. This jar file uh, allows us to interact with the Big Lake Metastore. So down here we have um, all that, I, everything I did is explained. Um, you can also screen print the slides. You can also do cleanup. So if you want to, you can list your uh, Metastores. Currently there's not a UI for this, but with this curl command, you can see your Metastores. So if you mess stuff up, um, you can also delete them and restart that process. So those commands are there. And then we have our Spark code. So we have our imports. We create a Spark session. I do need, uh, I have increased the network timeout for large jobs. So go ahead and do that if you need to. And then we have our project, our Iceberg catalog, which is the same name as above. Our warehouse, we're gonna call this Iceberg warehouse. Our taxi data set. And here's our source file. So the first thing we wanna do is create our namespaces for the catalog and the warehouse. And then we're gonna drop the table uh, in Iceberg uh, if it already exists. So when you run this, uh, if you wanted to rerun this store procedure, you do need to run a drop statement. So there's a uh, drop right here. See this drop external table. So you would wanna drop this table from BigQuery before you rerun this store procedure. And then we're going to create our Iceberg table using Iceberg. And this is where we link our catalog. So this is our big lake connection, and this is our big query uh, table name. So this will be the table inside of BigQuery. And this is uh, just Spark code that uh, reads Parquet, it selects it, and then we do it insert into. So I should be able to go ahead and run this, and this will create it. And then we can click on this, and we can do uh, invoke. And when I run this, and I'll probably pause the video for a second while this runs. So this will go ahead and start the process. And as soon as it's done, I'll uh, unpause the video. So the Spark job has finished. So let's take a look at the details. So if you click on job information, you can get to the log. If you'd like to see the log, um, that will show you in cloud logging all the details. You can also see it here as well. And you can see we have um, the job has run and it downloaded uh, the jar file. It went ahead and created this table and you can see the table now in BigQuery. So let's click refresh here and I'm gonna refresh the whole thing. Well, let me, I'm gonna open a new tab so we get, don't disturb our, our output. So we come here and let's see the table. Taxi data set, we have our iceberg payment table. So we have our two fields here. I'm going to hit query and we should be able to see select star from this and we'll get our data. So this is now a big lake table that's querying iceberg. So if we click on the details, you can see it's connected to our big lake metastore. I have our connection ID, so you can see those details. And then if we go to the buckets, we can go to the iceberg catalog. We see our iceberg warehouse and we have our DB, we have our payment type table and we have our physical data. In this case, we're using Parquet. So uh, right now, BigQuery is focused on Parquet for Iceberg. And then here we have our metadata JSON. So this is what the uh, catalog is synchronizing. So if I open additional Spark code outside of BigQuery or BigSpark, and I insert or update this table, additional JSON files here will be created. But since we're talking to the same Iceberg catalog, BigQuery will be aware of those changes and will be synchronized. So let's take a quick look at everything. We have our um, connections are all done. Uh, our procedure ran successfully. So I think that's everything we need to go through. Um, if you need those instructions, they will be inside the store procedure and that's on GitHub. So uh, that GitHub link is inside the uh, below where you see the uh, link to GitHub and that should be everything. And thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to let us know.